ourselves a new name. The Jet Set. We gotta get out of this place. The celebrity Jet Set elite, Hollywood stars like Elizabeth Taylor, knew that the Jet was a perfect photo opportunity, conveying in a single image the essence of glamour and glitz. Even today, people like Joan Collins and Liz Hurley have used flying first class as a way to establish their Hollywood credentials. Now, my girl, you're so young and... But just as the jet set was getting started, it all went wrong for the comet. This is the tragic scene of the comet disaster near Calcutta. Wreckage of the aircraft smashed almost beyond recognition. In 1953, Britain's jet age trailblazer started falling out of the skies. In just 13 months, four comets came crashing to Earth, killing 110 people. The problem was tragically simple. The comet had square windows, and the corners were weak points. Over time, as the plane's cabin was pressurized and depressurized for every flight, fine cracks developed around the corners of the windows, eventually becoming so big that the planes simply blew apart in mid-air. And that really was the end of Britain's involvement with mainstream passenger aviation. The future was to be found through the American round window. During the war, the British government had very kindly given Whittle's jet engine design to America in exchange for ammunition and equipment. And the Americans repaid us by taking over what was left of our commercial jet industry. By the late 1950s, the Comet had been redesigned, but it was too late. The Americans had cornered the market with the Boeing 707. The jet, the whole world wanted to fly. Carrying 143 people at up to 600 miles an hour, it was twice as fast as propeller planes and twice as large as the Comet. It was a chap called One Trip, boss of the American airline Pan Am, who brought the first Boeing 707s. Trip believed the jet would make air travel available to everyone. And one of the first places he flew his 707s from was New York, where I've just arrived. Trip was the Richard Branson of his day. He saw a world where you'd arrive at JFK with swollen feet and gritty eyes, where you'd spend two hours checking in for a flight and then three hours clearing customs. He envisaged a future where everyone was wearing a T-shirt, bearing a slogan, saying they'd been somewhere else. London and New York, the world's leading financial centres, were now only seven hours apart and people made the journey in their thousands. The 707 was the final nail in the coffin of the piston engine. Just nine 707s could do the work of 25 propeller planes. Autumn in New York. Great. It seems the British weather has also made its way across the Atlantic. So inviting. It was the 707 that fused the twin economic giants of New York and London. And even today, they're still joined at the head. You've got 28 flights a day and 10,000 people shuttling back and forth between the two cities. I feel very at home here somehow, much more so than I do in any other city in America. Can't think why. They're making me feel... You can now cross the Atlantic as quickly and as cheaply as going by train from London to Aberdeen. It's little wonder we call the Atlantic the Pond. When are we going to... That's what I want to know. It's autumn in New York.
They say a week is a long time in politics, but the likes of President Kennedy realized they could make a week last longer by jetting around the world. Shuttle diplomacy was born. It was Henry Kissinger who coined the term in 1973 when he jetted between Egypt and Israel as he brokered the Middle East peace treaty after the Yom Kippur War. The trouble is that shuttle diplomacy has rarely worked. But when it doesn't, you still need a jet. We just did climb 17,000 feet in 11 seconds. Oh, it's made me feel ill again. You're gonna go down. Okay, take your point. No, it's no good. I'm gonna throw up again. Sorry. Now I've done my fair share of flying around in fighter planes. Been there, done that, vomited on the T-shirt, and now look at me. I'm too fat and poncy to do them again. Chris just told me the last chap he flew with. Up 11 times. How many on twice? Do you want to do a loop? You do a loop. Yeah, that's good. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay, Never, ever, ever again. Jet planes come and go, but there's one that has stood the test of time like no other. The massive B-52. It was a B-52 that dropped the first hydrogen bomb on Bikini Atoll in 1956, escalating the Cold War. During the Vietnam conflict, B-52s flew 124,000 missions and dropped over 5,500 million pounds of bombs. Ultimately, they didn't change the outcome of that particular war, but they did keep it going for longer. If all the bombing by B-52s didn't change the world, then it certainly wasn't for a lack of trying. Today, the Americans have just 94 of the 744 B-52s that were built. 300 were destroyed in 1991 as the superpowers retreated from one another's throats. They were chopped up in the desert in full view of Russian satellites. But although the fleet is depleted, the B-52 is still very much a fighting force. These B-52s at Barksdale Air Force Base in Louisiana may have been built in the early 1960s, but they're still in service. The B-52 is a truly jaw-dropping aircraft. Its wings are so heavily laden with weapons and fuel, they need their own wheels. During the Cold War, the biggest bomber in the world was the iconic emblem of America's military might. Its crews on constant standby to counter the communist plot for world domination. Now we're looking good. Gotcha. Offense, defense, you ready for crew report? Offense, ready for crew report. The Reds may be gone, but the bombers are still ready because you never know when you might need one. The B-52 was used in the recent Iraq conflict, and they're due to remain in service, astonishingly, until 2045. Right, it's four o'clock in the morning. And I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all the obstacles in my way. And the main obstacle is that I'm going to spend the next five hours on an American airline with its nasty food and its bossy stewardesses. Great. And here we see the reality of flying today. Queuing JFK in the middle of August, it's a nightmare.